patron of Ireland, who broke the line of Christ forever, of course. Then to Bishop Seabury, who broke the line of America, where the Episcopal Church started. The line from Bishop Seabury was passed on to Bishop William White, the first presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in the United States. The light was then brought to the Philippines by Bishop Charles Brent. Other bishops and laymen in the Philippines followed suit in bringing the light to all parts of the Philippines. As you will watch the piece of lines depicted by the participants, you will be able to trace our Christian history to the lighting of the candles, which is passed on chronologically from one person to the other. So what is the significance of the Epiphany for us today? What meaning does the annual tradition of Epiphany have our faith, have for our faith and for our Christian life? I know that most of you have been watching this year in and year out, but the significance is what, what, what matters. The meaning of the whole pageant is what matters. If we repeat the piece of light for a mere sentimental impression, surely we betray the treasure of this great observance. The Feast of Epiphany is not held only as a commemoration of historical event in the life of Jesus, not merely for the attractiveness of the artificial atmosphere of lights, music, and poetry. It is much more than that. The recurrent celebration of Epiphany has a great spiritual significance far beyond either of these. It is not the mere commemoration of historical events, because in the Christian faith, Everything is present, here and now. For our Lord Jesus Christ is with us here and now, our inseparable companion and comforter. The historical event is but a motive and a remembrance for the person of Christ is ever present, and His grace is not merely a memory of history. So please don't think it as a recollection only of history or church history, but then the meaning should be invited in our hearts. Secondly, the physical environment, artistic or otherwise, many times helps the believer to approach both the vivid worship of our Lord, despite the danger of making this environment an end itself. Holding torches and candles, which we will do after the Mass, in our hands, and with our voices and feelings of devotion, Together we raise a symbol of the living Christian God, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as He appeared at the moment of the baptism of Jesus Christ, as He has been determined by the Church to the creed, as He is accepted by every living Christian as the living God, the God who hearkens our voices, the God who we beseech to accept us in communion, whom we hope to have as our companion, who is our comforter, who is the Alpha and Omega of our faith. To him we fear and love, we dedicate this day. We hold torches as those brethren and martyrs of the early Christian centuries, a great many of whom became torches themselves rather than deny Christ. And I hope uh, we also take this as a uh, model in our Christian life. We hold candles and our hearts burn as the hearts of those blessed persons who walk with the risen Christ through meals. Yes, it is the feast of lights. The lights which illuminate our conscience and our Christian way of life. It is rather the feast of the light. I am the light. Jesus said, He did not say, I will show you the light to you, but I am the light. It is not a new theory of life, it is mainly the knowledge of the true God which makes life as it is stated in the prayer of our Lord to his heavenly Father. And this is eternal life, that they know this, be the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast him. Now as we go through this faith pageant tonight, there are certain reminders so that we can concentrate on the pageant. First, please put your cell phones on silent mode. This celebration of the Feast of Light is a very solemn occasion. Actually, it is a mass in itself. Second, 
as we march to the different institutions scheduled for tonight. We are doing our Christian duty to pass on the land of Christ and to ask the truth. During the singing of Him to the Tzitzi, the spread of spread of spread, all clergy will walk down the aisle, lighting the candles of the first person in every pew. And no clapping of hands. You may clap your hands at the end. Uh, this year's uh, celebration includes music, which are Ikilokano, Filipino, and Yoguro. The main reason for this is to have a deeper meaning of what the songs that we have been singing. Of course, we always sing them in English every year, every Christmas. But let us go back to our culture and try to see the uh, translation. Of course, it is not the exact translation, but it, it tells the same meaning. So you will listen to uh, you might be looking for English, English songs. No, all of the choirs will be singing in Filipino, Filipino, and the Guru. So, thank you so much and enjoy the night. Or that light refers to darkness. 
heart as saan nga mapalin nga mapalin na pray. So if we speak of the goodness of God, this has been made known in pagita that in parikla ni Apo Tayo Yesu Cristo. This was made known through the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Himself has affirmed this in the goodness of His life way, especially if we read the Gospel of Saint John, wherein Jesus often refers to Himself as the light of the world, and whoever follows and believes in Him will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So, with these brothers and sisters. It explains what Christ came to do. Kay tuli ni pagbagan ni Jesus Cristo, ilaw lawat na ni Rasul no apay nga imay nga nakipagkriyak ka ni Isu na iti tayo tuwi nga nabawi ni Kaga. And that is to bring light and light into this evil and dark world that we live in. Tapuy ka na na tayo iti kriyak ka katang serve ni Isu na nasilaw iti tunggal because if you are not sure, because what is the meaning of Jesus Christ to you? How did Jesus do this to give us life and life in the Panagyari in the Tunggal of Maiza? For one, it is simply by giving hope and assurance of love to those who have lost confidence in life. That it is now and then. Iti nam na maunugana sa kaya tayo ng panagkiyak because of their difficult situation. Take for instance the poor. For those who are sick, nagigipasang sakit din. They were considered low-class and out-class respectively. They were lonely in life because of their situation. But then, Christ embraced and healed them. He freed them from their loneliness and had given them hope and love so that they might be needed. Secondly, through Jesus' teaching, He freed the people from their ignorance concerning God, concerning His kingdom, and in attaining their salvation. Because for the church leaders at that time, they were encouraging the people to wait for the coming of the Messiah. Iso suro na gito yung pakawuluan ni isim para turayan mo. Iti isa sa lupet, iti Messiah siya bang isalatan ka niya. But then the Messiah is already in front of them. At dahil mo ang iti sao. The Messiah is among them. Teaching them something which was different from their traditional leaders. And most importantly, the life that Jesus came to give us was achieved through His supreme sacrifice or by offering Himself on the cross for our sake. Babaan, iti panakatay ni Apu tayo ni Yesu Cristo. So kanagitoy nga rin kapag sata, we can say that Jesus is indeed the light thing. Of the work, isunay isilaw ni kita ito yung nalubu, kaya isunay ti mangkat iti biyaga iti tunggal maisa. And that through his words and deeds, the goodness of God was revealed for many people. Babaan ka nagiti inaaramid gan sinasabuhin ang kita yung Yesu Cristo, gan nadalay ng paliklana, gan in patamuna iti ayat iti Yosso. Itinunggal may sa kanya. So now, as we continue to reflect on this truth concerning the goodness of God as revealed by Jesus, there are three reactions. At two, iti inarami ka iti ibang tao, iti na ito yung inagpaiso, may panggap, iti binaybag, iti Diyos. And this is still based on the gospel of Saint John. For one, there are those who did not believe in me. At that nagiging tataong na haan na lumaki, itinay ko eh, kakinagpay so may panggap, itipamati pa yung kasmay sa mga Christian, that Jesus is our light, 
and that the goodness of God was revealed through him. At yung naging tiyaan niya na makikitlay ko'y na pinagpay ko. Even if they saw and witnessed what Christ did during his life and ministry, still they did not believe him. Haanda na na makikitlay ko'y na nalaginan ni Jesus Christo. For them, they preferred to stay in darkness and they did not accept Christ as the light there that God sent them to reveal His goodness and His glory. Their hearts were hardened not to believe Him, and thus they rejected Jesus' teaching and the life that He came to offer. Secondly, doon dadagi ni Haan na namati at damat ni namati, there are those who forgive me. Yung di problema ni did not confess their faith ni Handa ang ika sa kapatakamunutan na ita nga pangmati na. These people are those who are in power or they have high position in society and they don't want to give up this power or this position that they are, uh, that they are enjoying. So what they did do? They became secret believers. Mamati na ang kongreso but they try their best to hide that light in their life. So to speak, they are closer Christians. Mamati na ang lahat na katayag na mga buwan na nagigilag yung mga tataw that they believe in Jesus Christ. But then, the teachings of Jesus is very clear. He says, I am the light of the world. And to those who begin and confess their faith, he said, You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before them, that they may see your good deeds and place your Father in heaven. And lastly, those who begin and follow the light, the light meaning Jesus Christ. Nagituiga ng atatrao, hindi nagluan pang mati, can be biyaga they na nga pangmati na. They live out their faith. They obey the teachings of Jesus in their daily lives. And they try their best to reveal for the blood na may parigla na in may parigla na in kinasaya iti Diyos. Tanyada babaem iti adamit na parang iparigla na in kinaita iti parada nga tatao. So this evening, brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this feast of fights, I am sure, but check the road, that you are one with me and choosing the third group of people. May may sana itigawat ng kararag tayo, kayat tayo na mapasama at ipanagyag tayo, that we may consider as a believer and a follower of the light, Jesus Christ. Isunay tayo kayat mo apat siya. Yan isumot tayo, itinawat ng tari, ititunggal may sa kanya na yung itinay ko'y nga nagtili. So to all of us, we are the light of the world. May we let our light shine before men, that they may see our beauty, and that through us, through our words and deeds, our Father who is in heaven may be. So na ito'y ganun, hindi maibati na parin kita na na challenges ka niya na yung ito'y ito'y karabi as we celebrate the peace of God's Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
A reading from the book, from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 7. In those days, a decree went from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be in This was the first and one when Quirinius was governor of Syria, it all went to be in Rome, which still sounds good. And Joseph also went up from Wadi, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be in Rome with Mary, his bedrock, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. The word of the Lord. Another little message. Lord, give, give the Tories another chance. The wise men, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, 
Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and asserted from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. When they heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy.
The three kings presented him with gold because he is the world's only true king, the one merciful Lord, worthy of our gifts, our service, and our vows. They blessed him with incense, that sweet-smelling smoke might evermore rise up from our altars to the throne of his majesty, worshiping and blessing and magnifying him, the one true God. They offered him birth, because it would soon anoint his immaculate body, preparing it for his burial. The wise men brought their gifts to the Christ. All of us should also bring gifts to Christ, who is born in a stable, and who died on the cross for our salvation. Let your lights so shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father, who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Mm -hmm.
the calling of the twelve disciples. They came from Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. And he called to him his twelve disciples, and gives them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal every disease and every infirmity. The names of the twelve apostles are these. Simon called Peter. He was appointed by Jesus, the leader of the new set. Is viewed by Roman Catholics as the first pope. Was eventually martyred in Rome during the reign of the Emperor Nero. There is satisfactory evidence that he and Paul were the founders of the Church of Rome. In Rome, about 66 AD, he was crucified upside down at his request, since he did not feel he was worthy to die in the same manner as his Lord. Next, we have Andrew. Andrew, he went to the land of the man-eaters, in which was the Soviet Union and now Russia. Christians there claimed him as the first to bring the gospel to their land. He also preached in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, and in Greece. Andrew was scourged and then tied rather than nailed to a cross, so that he would suffer for a longer time before dying. Andrew lived for two days, during which he preached to passerby, passersby. Next comes brother James, his brother James. James, the son of Zebedee, was executed by Herod about 44 AD. The newly appointed governor of Judea, Herod Antipa, decided to ingratiate himself with the Romans by persecuting leaders of the new sect. After James was arrested and led to a place of execution, his unnamed accuser was moved by his courage. He not only repented and converted on the spot, but asked to be executed alongside James. The Roman executioners obliged, and both were beheaded simultaneously. Next comes John. John was the only one of the original disciples not to die a violent death. Instead, he passed away peacefully in Patmos in his old age, sometime around 180. Next comes Philip. Philip possibly had a powerful ministry in Carthage in North Africa and then in Asia Minor where he converted the wife of a Roman proconsul. In retaliation, his proconsul had him arrested and truly put to death. Next comes Bartholomew. He, he had the widespread missionary travels attributed to him by tradition to India with Thomas, back to Armenia, and also to Ethiopia and Southern Arabia. There are various accounts of how he met his death as a martyr for the gospel. Thomas was probably most active in the area east of Syria. Tradition has him preaching as far as east as India, for the ancient Martoma Christians revered him as the founder. They claim that he died there when pierced through with the spears of four soldiers. Then comes Matthew, the tax collector. He must have lived many years as an apostle since he was the author of the Gospel of Matthew, which was written at least 20 years after the death of Christ. There is a reason to believe that he stayed for 15 years at Jerusalem, after which he went as a missionary to the Persians, Parthians, and Medes. There is a legend that he died a martyr in Ethiopia. Then comes James, the son of Alpheus. According to Fox, James, who was elected by his fellow believers to head the churches of Jerusalem, was one of the longest-lived apostles perhaps exceeding only John. At the age of 94, he was beaten and stoned by persecutors and then killed him by hitting him in the head with a club. Then comes Thaddeus. According to tradition, he taught in Armenia, Syria, and Persia, 
for he was martyred. Tradition tells us that he was buried in Kara Aliza, in which is now Iran. Then comes Simon, the Cananean. He ministered in Persia and was killed after refusing to sacrifice to the Son of God. Then comes Judas Iscariot. After the death of Christ, he hanged himself. These twelve, Jesus sent out charging them, Go now, no more among the Gentiles, and enter the town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep to the house of Israel, and preach as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, you receive without pay, give without pay. Take no gold, no silver, nor copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, no tunics, no nor sandals, nor a staff. For the laborer deserves his food, and whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy of it, and stay with him until you depart. As you enter the house, salute it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if everyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust on your feet as you leave the house of town. Truly I say to you, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, or they will deliver you up to the councils and slug you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear testimony before them and the Gentiles.
the election of Matthias, Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the brethren. The company of persons was all in about 120, and said, Brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand, by, by the mouth of David, concerning Judas, who was guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and he was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his battles gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language, Akel Dama, which is filled of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it, and his office let another take. So one of the men who accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us as a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward to Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Hustus and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, who knowest the hearts of all men, show which one of these two thou hast chosen to take the place in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas has turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was enrolled with the eleven apostles.
chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. But so, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might, he might bring them back to Jerusalem. Now as he journeyed, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed about him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, So, so, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do.
This is the list of saints who are missionaries. Saint Augustine, the first Archbishop of Canterbury, who carried the light of Christ to England. Saint Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, who brought the light of Christ to Ireland. Thomas I. Kramer, the father of the Anglican liturgy, who made the celebration of our Mass a beautiful and a meaningful, meaningful one. Bishop Seabury, who carried the light of Christ to America. Bishop William Point, the first presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in America. To us Christians in the Philippines, we are grateful so much to the following missionaries who brought the light of Christ to our country, province, and municipality. Bishop Brent, the first bishop of the Anglican Church in the Philippines. Bishop Mosher, the second bishop. Bishop Vincent, the third bishop. Father Barker, the first Anglican priest in Baguio and in Bengal. Miss Elsie Sharp, post-war church worker who established a clubhouse and who is, who is instrumental in bringing back the forlorn Ivalois to the fold of the church. Deacon Suluin, the first deacon. Bishop Kabantan, the first Filipino bishop. Father Tikubai, the first missionary to be sent by the Philippine Episcopal Church to bring light, to bring the light of Christ to Borneo. Mother Teresa, the first Ibaloi convert to enter the nunnery. Clement Laoya I, donor of the old church site. The Reverend Alejandro Roman Tauli, the first Resident Episcopal Church in La Trinidad. Bishop Zabala, the first Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of North Central Philippines. The Rectors of the Episcopal Church, August 1952 to 1956, the Reverend Alejandro R. Tauni. 1956 to 1962, the Reverend Richard A. Avignon. 1963 to 1971, the Reverend Anthony O. Sagana. 1972 to 1987, the Reverend Alejandro G. Abad. 1987 to 1993, the Reverend Joel A. Pancha. May 1993 to October 1995, the Reverend Rudy L. Castro, December 1995 to June 2006, the Reverend Luis D. Yacuan, July 2006 to March 2007, the Reverend Vincent S. Buffett, April 2007 to February 2009, the Reverend Gabriel O. Sakiwa Sr., March 2009, to May 2009, the Reverend Alejandro G. Abad, June 2009 
to April 2014, the Reverend Jonathan C. Obar. May 2014 to June 2017, the Reverend Augustin B. Lizardo III. And at present, our rector, the Reverend Richard Stone B. Banagi, and our curate, the Reverend Yvette B. Iman.
until his clinic. A nurse to his or her patient. A BIR employee to his client. A government official to his constituent and a clergy to his congregation. Tonight, by the light of the candles, we are showing the symbol of the light of Christ spread into all corners of the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, keep the light of Christ burning into your hearts always. Keep your candles lighted. 
take them out from the church into the world in peace. May I also take this opportunity to thank the participants we have in front. You may clap your hands now. These participants composed of the different organizations of the church. Uh, from the choir, the different singing groups. First, we have the Cathedral of the Resurrection, headed by Miss Raisa Mangba, the choir director. Stand up. Please stand so that we can see you. We come now to the Clergy, Clergy Spouses Association, their first time to join us of the EDNCP. Headed by Dr. Florence Kutke, the choir coordinator. The Indian City Clergy Ensemble. Papan tayo na ito eh. The choir director is Ms. Marina Lizarano, however, we missed her tonight. Then comes St. Paul's Municipal Church Choir of Kirinomi. Headed by Ms. Bernadette Pinkis and her choir coordinator. We come now to the St. Philip Pastor Parish Choir. Again, our choir director is Ms. Bernal Lizardo. And then, of course, the host choir, Epiphany Coros. by the choir director, Mr. Miguel Colos Jr. We also have to give thanks to our pianist this uh, evening, Ms. Maribel Rabino. Oh, I'm sorry. The Holy Innocence Episcopal Church Choir. Oh, and then by Mr. Luis Lopatino, the choir director. Sorry. And then we have uh, come up to the Siles and one who played the cello, Mr. Harold Peter Tipper. And also the other pianists who joined uh, tonight was, of course, Mr. Miguel Polos and Mr. Riz Aquino. You know, <laughs> we also thank the readers. Ms. Rachel Gano, Ms. Shannon Kralpa, Ms. Marvin Morana, Ms. Milda Pinala. And of course, the Tiffany Church organizations who help us a lot to make this affair a success. The ECW, BSA, SCAP, the ECHO, and TCM. And also the seminarians who help us a lot. Uh, Ms. Nilda Pilala, Mr. Raymond Sean Roland, and Mr. Franz Alison Powell. And of course, behind the scenes, who helped us a lot, uh, these were the very people who helped organize the whole thing, Ms. Virginia Mesona, Mr. Abel Macario, Mr. Arnold, and the other staff members of the uh, Church of Epiphany for tireless work which contributed a lot to the success of this affair. And to all of you who came to view this, thank you, thank you very much.
na ito'y nga padyan, ikyas na itisilaw, kagiso iti magibaga, iti panakayo ang lab, iti kinagristyano, magungi, iti pinakayanak, ni ang punta yung Yesu Cristo, iti paalis tayo. Pinggalay na tama oras, ito iti tayo ng atinidad. Ito tama rin na ang pas ni nagkipinaspet tayo, iti silaw, pantayo tayo, iti him, 340 iti ECP, kag him, 562 iti 1980, Katrumwal na yung itinay ko na simbahan, iawit na yung itinagpalay na yun. Iawit na yung itinang isilaw na yung ipakita, itinigrit, kinag-Kristyano na yun. Kung bangarod na itinang Kristyano, katinigay na yung itinang silaw, itinang samanin. 